Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. In this week's video, I'm going over some of my favorite products for Xenophil highlighting, whether or not you should assemble your miniature before you begin, how to change your light source, as well as my favorite way to paint over Xenophil highlights to utilize them to their maximum potential. Favorite products. If you want a super smooth Xenophil highlight, then you'll want to use a gray primer and white ink. The gray primer is going to make the blend between black and white that much smoother, as well as make the application of your white ink later a lot easier. Spraying white directly over black, especially if you're utilizing white paint, is going to leave a more speckled texture and is therefore going to make your transitions harsher or at least more obvious. Now, if you're going to be painting over your Xenophil highlights, Perhaps you're not too concerned with the smooth gradation between black, gray to white, but if you are, I highly recommend using a white ink. Specifically, I use this white ink from Dale or Rowney. Basically, inks are a dye, which means that they atomize into far smaller particles than traditional paint, especially traditional white paint. The white ink is very translucent, which is why it builds up so beautifully and you can have such that smooth gradation. However, it does make it far more finicky to work with. You need to apply very thin layers, and it is extremely important to let each layer dry between coats. You can only apply so much. Otherwise, what begins to happen is that the paint begins to puddle and splatter, or your miniature can become very sticky. Usually I apply my thin layer and then to help speed it along, I'll go ahead and go over it with just air from my airbrush. If you are planning on spraying inks or other very translucent paints over your white ink, I highly recommend sealing it first. And if you don't seal it, what can happen is that the ink doesn't fully dry. I don't, I don't know the science behind it, but what I do know is that it makes a huge mess as the white ink and whatever other color ink you've applied starts to meld together and melt down your miniature. So seal it first. Assemble or not assemble. So this isn't something that comes up all the time, but I think that when it is relevant, it's extremely important. And that is whether or not you should fully assemble your model before you apply your Xenophil highlights. Well, the question you have to ask yourself is simple. Will fully assembling the model make it more difficult to paint, either with a paintbrush or with an airbrush? If assembling it is going to make painting more difficult, then you should prime and then assemble. Now, this is general advice, but let's look at how this can be done with Xenophil highlights in specific. The most common example of this is when the base will make it difficult to be able to easily apply your black shadows for your Xenophil highlights. When I was working on this miniature, which I commonly refer to as the BBEG from my last D&D campaign, I needed to pop the miniature off of the base in order to get my airbrush fully underneath it to achieve those dark shadows like I wanted. That's because this base was so large that I was only going to be able to spray from below at certain angles and not be able to get all of the shadows that I was going to want on this figure. Now let's focus on areas other than the base. For this Kingdom Death miniature, because of her wings, she would be difficult to paint with an airbrush or a paintbrush fully assembled. However, I would like to include the wings when I apply my Xenophil highlights so I can accurately achieve my highlights and shadows. So what I did is I did my shadows from below as well as took the black up onto her back and butt so that I could sh basically shade underneath those wings. Then using blue poster tack, I placed the wings where they belonged and then used my white ink from above to achieve my highlights. By using blue poster tack, I was able to get the shadows and the highlights without needing to assemble my model. A few tips about working with blue poster tack. The longer you leave it on a miniature, the more difficult it's going to be to remove. However, if you are having little stringy bits and bobs left on your miniature, 
warm up some blue poster tack off to the side and use it as a stamp and stamp away those last little spindles of that blue tack. Second, you should try to fit the blue poster tack and the miniature piece in as snugly as possible. Obviously, the blue poster tack is going to prevent paint from adhering anywhere that that blue poster tack is covering. However, if you want to, you can remedy this by going in later and matching that color and brushing it on by hand. Placing your light source. The tried and true way to do zenithal highlights is black from below and white directly from above. While this is great and works 99% of the time, it's boring. You can create a completely new and dynamic light setup by changing where and how you apply your zenithal highlights. Basically, imagine your airbrush as your light source and the white ink that you release is where the light would hit your model. As you can see here, we are changing the position of our light source and we can greatly change the mood and dynamism of the scene. You can also change the feeling by how much of the miniature you light. Here you can see the difference between utilizing my larger light source, as I did previously, in comparison to lighting the subject with a very small and intense light source. For a larger light source that covers more of your model, you'll use larger sweeping circles to apply your white ink. For a more intense light, you'll do smaller and tighter circles. You are in control of your light source and you should have as much fun as you want. Of course, the larger your model, the more accurate you'll be able to zenithal highlight in these more unique lighting scenarios. Though I'm in love with Rembrandt lighting, you're not gonna be able to use zenithal highlighting to perfectly achieve Rembrandt lighting on a 28 millimeter model. The same theory can be applied to your shadows. You don't have to paint directly from below at a perfect perpendicular angle. Is perpendicular the word I want? Perpendicular? Parallel perpendicular. Go ahead and move your airbrush around your miniature and you'll be able to achieve a far more subtle gradation of your shadows. One question I hear frequently is what do I do after I've done my zenithal highlights. And that is a topic that I will be covering in a whole separate video, and when it's live, you'll be able to find it here. In the meantime, I wanted to go over one of my favorite ways of painting over zenithal highlights. The trick is to mix paint and ink in a 50-50 ratio. As I said before, ink is a dye suspended in liquid. So basically, by applying inks over your zenithal highlights, you're really just adding color to the highlights and shadows that you've already created. However, that's not always the effect that you're looking for. Perhaps you want more of a jewel tone or more of a dark desaturated. And in general, there are just only so many inks. And in comparison, there are so many paint options. The reason that I like to do a mixture of paint and ink is that ink is translucent and will still show through the zenithal highlights, while paint is going to make it more opaque and give you better coverage, and more variety. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that it was useful and helpful to you. Let me know in the comments down below. Were these tips new to you? Were there any that I missed? If you would like to support me and my work, of course, you can join me on Patreon. Subscribe, comment, share, like down below. It means the world to me to hear from you. You can also follow me on Instagram to see projects that I'm currently working on, as well as participating in polls and other interesting things. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.